If every student participated in FIRST, the world would be inspired. We would be inspired to dream big. Not a snoozy. Motivated. More people will be encouraged and energized to get educated. No longer a rattle brain. Educated. Ambition and knowledge ignite the creative thinking process. Creative. Being inventive and having resources, the collaboration begins. Stop being a snoozy Joe. Collaborative. With teamwork and unity, the vision becomes more clear. Don't be an intro turtle. Innovative. Using cutting-edge technology and all the tools we have learned along the way through FIRST, we are more driven to make our dreams come true. The star of this story? FIRST inspires, motivates, educates, helps us become creative, collaborative, and innovative. FIRST helps make dreams come true. Hi, this is NEMC TV6 Focus Program. I am Jamie Mills, a mentor of Team 8845, the Wild Bees. Uh, we have the team here and we'd like to do, introduce everyone. My name is Brennan DeVos. I have been in FIRST for four years. I am on the drive team and I mainly enjoy building. I am Ellie Mills. I have been in FIRST for two years. I am team captain and on the drive team and I also like to code the robot. I am Mason Mills. Um, this is my third year in FIRST. I am on the drive team and I love building. Hi, I'm Josiah Hookers. I'm in sixth grade. This is my second year in robotics and I mainly help build. Hi, my name is Mark Myers. This is my first year in robotics and I mainly build. Hi, my name is Ellie Kenya. This is my first year in robotics and I like to code and build the robot. Hi, my name is Chase Moore. I'm in seventh grade. This is my first year in first robotics and I mainly help build and code the robot. Thank you guys. Um, Brandon, can you please tell me what FIRST stands for? FIRST stands for, for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. Very interesting. Are there different levels of the FIRST program? Yes, there are four different le levels. Junior FLL, which is a FIRST LEGO League. Then there's the FIRST LEGO League, FTC, FIRST Tech Challenge, and then FRC, FIRST Robotics Competition. When you say the four different levels, the FLL Junior, yep. what grades is that? That is kindergarten to third grade. And the next step up would be FLL? Yep, that is fourth and fifth grade. And you guys are FTC? Yep, that is sixth to eighth grade. And FRC? It is ninth to twelfth. Okay. Um, Elodie, would you like to tell us how you joined the robotics team? Um, so at their last competition, uh, Ellie, my best friend, she um, brought me along with her because she thought it'd be cool if I were to watch and see what happened. Uh, I really enjoyed it and I liked everything and one of the mentor one of our mentors um, he kind of he really wanted me to join because um, Ellie was the only eighth grade girl member at the time so um, I wanted and so I really thought it'd be cool to join and um, be with the team. Great. Um, Mark. I thought it would be cool like building a robot and yeah I just wanted to join. Brandon? When I was in fourth grade, I remember seeing a presentation that the FLL did from the previous year, and after that, I wanted to join robotics. Cool. Mason? Um, I was also in fourth grade, uh, same year as Brandon, and I heard that uh, they were making robots out of Legos, and I just thought, how cool is that? And I got this far, and I'm really like it. Well, we'll be back shortly and we will be discussing the build of the robot. Hi, welcome back. 
This is the Focus Program. I'm here with the Memphis Wild Bees, Team 8845 out of Memphis, Michigan, and we are discussing their FTC program. Um, and right now we're going to talk about the build of this, this robot. So, Ellie, are there any special requirements or materials, guidelines that you guys need to follow before the construction? Yes. So at first, we need to think about it having to be under 42 pounds because it's a, late, a weight limit. And it, it has to fit inside an 18 by 18 square. But after the match started, we can have parts extending from it. It just has to start off 18 by 18. Are there any specific materials? I don't think so. That you, that you can use or you can't use? Chase? We're not allowed to use any, um, like, obviously radioactive material or things, things of that nature, hazardous, has, hazardous material or waste of, say, farm animals, things like that. Okay. We also can't have anything that will destroy or damage other teams, robots, or the field. Okay. All right. So. Let's talk about the slint roller. Okay, so we started off with a bucket on the front of our lift system in order to suck in blocks and push them back out into the lander, which is how we score them. And we had problems with our drivetrain. Sometimes it would flip or it would get stuck on the rim of the crater because we had no traction on the ground. So we, our, our mentor and our team had an idea of a lint roller so that we could not have the problem getting stuck and it just reaches in, sticks to it, and brings it back out. Very cool. Um, what about the hook? So these hooks here are basically what we started with. We had, we originally had something like this design where the hook, it wasn't, it was not strong enough. It was too flimsy. So basically what the hook is for is in the beginning of the game, you can start hanging off of the lander, which is like a, it's a thing in the center of the field where you can score points there and you can hang from it. So in the beginning of the game, if you hang from the lander, you get points for that. And at the end of the game, if you hang on the lander, you also get points for that. But if you don't hang in the beginning of the game, you cannot get points at the end of the game. And so we started with one hook that was just too flimsy and it snapped almost as soon as we tried it. It was a plexiglass, plexiglass hook. So we started on to the 3D hook and that one also snapped. So we added more filament to it. And eventually, instead of using square shapes, we use diamond shapes because when you pull on a diamond shape, it just spreads. When you pull onto a square shape, it snaps. So not only was our diamond shapes um, stronger, but so was adding more filament to it. And then we've had at least seven or eight different hooks. Wow. Very neat. Kelly, you mentioned drivetrain. Can you explain that? So we have a six-wheel drop center drive train, and that's because it helps us spin faster and it helps us, for our first competitions, it helped us get into the crater easier, and yeah. So does the robot just go back and forth? Um, it can go back and forth and it can spin in a 360 circle. Okay. Um, what is these bars? that are attached to the lint roller, what, what does that do? These bars here, we originally started, that's our lift. It helps, it, the lander is up a few, few feet, so we have to get up all the way up there to drop these blocks in there into the lander and those spheres into the lander. So when we drop these in there, we get points. So we needed to have the lift so we could get high enough to drop these blocks in there. Originally we started with just one one um, rod leaning down to the bucket that she explained earlier. Okay. And that rod 
just couldn't get high enough and it couldn't support the weight of the bucket. So we moved on to a, something called a four bar lift. And a four bar lift, not only does it get high enough, but it also can keep the bucket level while we're going up. But unfortunately, the four bar lift didn't go as high up as we thought it would go. So we added the six bar lift, which it's the same concept of the four bar lift, except it goes higher. Okay, cool. Our, our six bar lift still helps us because even though the bucket is taken off, we still need it to get high enough because the lint roller can't get high enough on its own. And we have a problem with either like overshotting it or not going high enough to get the lint roller into the lander. So we have code so that when we hit a button, it will go right up to the exact height we need it so that we can just go faster in the match. Oh, very cool. Um, what is the strength of this robot? That's a tricky question. It's very strong. <laughs> it's very strong, a very durable robot. Yeah, I would say it's very durable because it's able to hold all of its weight with the um, plastic hook and it most of it's made out of metal and everything, so it's pretty well put together. So when you guys are competing and you're out on your game field, um, it doesn't crash into anybody? Well, it shouldn't, um, unless something goes very wrong. It shouldn't go into anybody. And if someone runs into us, we have this siding on the back and on the sides, so that if anyone goes into us, it shouldn't run into anything. That's super important. Is there anything else that we should know about the building and construction of the robot? We all worked on it as a team. Very cool. Elodie? I don't know. I was just going to say that the, the lint roll, roller before, um, it didn't used to have as much supports to it. it um, the bar in the middle, we didn't have that before, and the two things holding up the lint roller to the bars are um, a lot more strong than they used to be. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, we'll take a break, and when we get back, we will discuss some of the community involvement that the team does. Hi, welcome back to Focus Program. I'm here with the Memphis Wild Bees, Team 8845. And we're just going to finish this up talking about some community involvement and outreach. Um, what do you guys do for your community? One thing we did is we teamed up with the local Richmond Lions Club as well as the Richmond FTC and FRC teams put on a breakfast with Santa. So a couple other things we did is um, me and a couple other FTC and FRC members of the Memphis teams, we went to a kids on the move thing and we built wheelchairs for kids three and under that their insurance didn't cover and we made it easily accessible to all surfaces. We also went and helped the Girl Scouts earn, earn their robotics badges and taught them about first in STEAM. Another thing we did was um, um, the our robotics team and some other teams in the uh, Buwara area, area, which is the Blue Water Area Robotics Alliance teams. And basically we just drove around in the parades and showed everyone what FIRST and STEM is. We also did a trick-or-treating for the disabled around our area. Basically we took them and went trick-or-treating all around our area. We went over to the elementary school to read up to second and third graders about imagination and to teach them about STEM and um, uh, robotics. One other thing we've done for community involvement is we donated money to Hurricane Relief for Hurricane Florence in North Carolina. We also, we also donated some money to the Walk Up Week because they were a working team and they needed lots of help. All right, so what is the community outreach that you've done to promote FIRST? Like I said with the Breakfast with Santa, that we exposed about 500 people to both 
to both first and STEM? I would say Girl Scouts is involvement and outreach. So we talked to them about our team, but we also explained first and STEM and everything involving robotics. Very cool. All right, so let's talk about awards. Have you, I see some awards on the table. So can you explain what those are from? So both of these awards are from our last competition in Kearsley. Um, one of them is from the Winning Alliance. So we were on the alliance with two other teams and we won the whole thing. And the other one is the Inspire Award, which I would say, in my opinion, is the best award you can get. It's, um, it, you have to be really thankful to get it. Okay. Um, what types of um, things are required to earn that type of award? The Inspire Award. Um, well, it has to do with everything we've done from our robot to our book, which our book shows everything we've done. And what, what is your book? Is it, is it's our engineering notebook and we have paid, we fill out a page every day after our practice about what we did and what we filled out. And we also have like our business plan, hmm. how we dealt with all of our finances and sponsoring. And we basically put everything that we've done throughout the season in there. For so that includes um, the, the building of the robot? Yes. Every single part that's on there is in the book. So every part we've used so is in the So it's pretty important. It is yeah. really important. And I think in every award, when it describes it in the game manual, it says that you need to have an engineering notebook. And so does that go before uh, like a small group of judges, a large group of judges? When you guys, when, when they are trying to figure out who's gonna win? They, all the judges look at it. How many judges are there usually? Mm, like, let's say around like 15, 15 to 20. Maybe. Wow. So we go in for um, into a judging room before any of the matches start, and we basically explain um, all the community outreach and everything that we just did. And they will look at it and take a look at it, but then after that, when they're deciding who get, wins the awards, then every, all of the judges look at it. Well, it sounds like this is a pretty successful team. Yeah. You guys should be proud of yourselves. Thank you. One of our mentors was actually a judge at one point. He um, he volunteered to be a judge and he got accepted and he did a pretty good job at it. Very cool. All right, so tell me about um, your coach, your your head coach. Who is that? Um, Mr. Glenn Hack, he's a, a great he? person. <laughs> he owns- I see lots of smiles. <laughs> yeah. He's the character. <laughs> he owns Hack's family greenhouses and all four of his sons help mentor our team. And um, one of them helped teach them. Um, Nick Hack, he helped teach all of us about how to do CAD and the 3D printer. Very neat. So all of his kids are in robotics? Yes, mm -hmm. they all are in or have been in at one point. Do you know how long Mr. Hack has been involved with robotics? Since 2014, when our team started. Wow. Sounds like you have a very good leader. So what's next? Where are you guys headed to? So next weekend, we're headed to our state championship at, at Kellogg Center in Battle Creek. And after that, we hope to go to Worlds, which is at Ford Field in Detroit and Cobo. That would be exciting. Yeah. How many days is dates? Eight. States. States competition, States how many days is that? Three oh, days. Oh. Okay. And if you make it from there, you go to Worlds, and how many days is Worlds? I don't know. Four, four, five. Five. Four or five. Pretty intense. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that about sums it up. Thank you for joining us on NEMC TV6 for the FOCUS program, and thank you, Wild Beasts.
boldly go where no robot has gone before.